How's it going folks? Stu here. We are on my sofa. It is towards the end of the London Film Festival. I'm tired, all right? So, so we're getting cozy. It's cozy season. All right, October's finally getting cold. Let me be comfy. Hope you're very good. I'm very good. And I'll tell you exactly why in T minus right now. I've just seen the new Yorgos Lanthimos film, Poor Things, which has been on the top of my more anticipated list of the year. It delivered. This was very much not a poor thing, very much a, a good thing. Better than good. So Poor Things, new one from Yorgos Lanthimos, a director I'm a very, very big fan of. You may have seen some of his earlier works. The Favourite was his last one, but he's also done Killing of a Sacred Deer, The Lobster, uh, Dog Tooth. This one is an adaptation of a novel of the same name. I have not read said novel, as usual, but the general premise of this one is a, it's sort of like a Frankenstein take, right? We are following uh, Bella Baxter, who is a, I don't know how much I want to get, how, how much do I say about this? Part of the charm of this thing for me was not knowing really anything about it going in, so as usual, I'm going to say, go in as blind as you can. But the general premise is that we're following a character who is a older body w with an infant's brain put inside it at the hands of her sort of creator, but father figure, uh, conveniently titled God, which is, you know, a shorthand nickname. But yep, we know what you're doing there, played by Willem Dafoe. The film is, in essence, a sort of coming of age film, I suppose, for Bella as a kind of Frankenstein character. She's played wonderfully by Emma Stone in the film. And right off the bat, this thing is just a glorious, twisted, warped little kind of Frankenstein fairy tale in a way which I think only someone like Yorgos Lanthimos could really pull off. I've always been a very big fan of the way that Lanthimos uses his tools to create a kind of unsettling atmosphere to varying different degrees of subtlety. You know, some moments in his films are very absurd and obviously over the top, but also he uses a lot of various different techniques to just, just create an off kilter setting in his films and I loved seeing that applied here to a kind of frankenstein -y tale uh, a, a more kind of a fairy tale suggests kind of a whimsical approach and I suppose overall it is quite whimsical I suppose compared to Lanthimos's previous work but I don't mean to sort of diminish the darker sides of things here because this is a very kind of well-rounded Yorgos Lanthimos fairy tale vibe right it, it is a deeply funny and absurd film which pushes all of its elements to the max, to, to 11 here. It's easy to see how something like this with so much going on might have felt quite messy, but Lanthimos, it just, dude, just, he just kills it all the time, doesn't he? And one of the things I love about Lanthimos's films uh, up to this point, pretty consistently, are the performances he's able to get out of his actors in these films. I mean, he's definitely got a talent for pulling out very unique but committed performances from people, and here is no different with Emma Stone in the lead role, but also Mark Ruffalo, uh, Willem Dafoe, everyone else in the film. Everyone is giving very strange but fantastic performances. Emma Stone is very, very good here as Bella Baxter. It's a role which, as I just said, it, it demands a certain level of commitment and she throws herself through it with everything she's got. It's just, it's always great watching her on screen. The character is obviously literally a adult woman with an infant's brain in her head uh, and she sort of immediately very perfectly encapsulates all of those aspects in her role. But my favourite part of the film performance wise and my biggest surprise comes in the form of Mark Ruffalo. I've always been a fan of Mark Ruffalo but it is so great to see actors give different committed roles and this is just something absurdly fun from Mark Ruffalo. He is giving it his all here as this insanely heightened borderline campy performance here every scene between emma stone and mark ruffalo it's just glorious i loved watching him in here here's some of my favorite line deliveries of the year in this film dude crushes it he's so good but also obviously i'm, I'm a willem dafoe fan through and through i love everything he does he's great here as uh god bella's creator and you know he's got a lot of prosthetics on as this twisted disfigured individual but actually, Willem Dafoe, again, brings this great duality to the character. He is a man that is obsessed with science and, again, has an interesting power dynamic with his sort of daughter figure in the film, who he created but has, you know, a daughter relationship with. There's a real kind of warped and twisted, comforting, but at the same time, uneasy feeling. It's a weird juxtaposition of vibes. But the world that Lanthimos creates around these performances is just as big a part of the feel of this film, the sets in this thing and the way it's all photographed, just 
absolutely gorgeous just absolutely amazing stuff there are these two sort of facets to the film there are these big kind of wide outdoor sort of scenic moments uh, in which Lanthimos pulls in the world around these characters uh, and we see this kind of yeah, warped, dreamlike sort of fairy tale vision of different locations. We go to London, Lisbon, France, and all of these spaces are kind of like rooted in certain aspects we know from reality, but twisted in this very fairy tale like manner. I love that vibe when it's done well in films, and Lanthimos is, is having a lot of fun and is very committed to creating just deliciously creative worlds in this film. But the other facet are inside the buildings or, or I suppose the more character driven moments of the film, which are shot in this literally warped sense with very kind of fisheye lenses on characters as we follow them through environments and as we look close up at them in dialogue. I've always loved the way that Lanthimos's films look and it's an integral part to the unease that's felt when watching a lot of Lanthimos's film. And it's so interesting to see that same sort of device and those same cinematography elements used previously to create uneasy and unsettling and darker tones, used to create similarly unsettling environments, but in a slightly more fun way, in a slightly more whimsical vibe. Honestly, it's kind of absurd what a wide lens on a camera floating through a building will do to me at this point. It is like an Achilles heel for me in cinema. Love that shit, the way that environments move around people when shot through an ultra wide lens so good a lot of lanthimos films have left me sort of feeling a certain way after the fact it, it, sometimes in a way which i can't shake and sometimes in a way which in a good way i i, I can't, can't get out of my head a lot of his films have been very sort of cynical and sinister and darker i think back to something like killing of a sacred deer a film which left me feeling incredibly uneasy and just disturbed. This is almost entirely a different end of the spectrum where it's filled with this kind of exploration of what it means to be alive and be a person and this sort of sexual liberation as well in the film. That stuff isn't always hugely lighthearted, but it does feel like a very confident kind of playfulness we're getting from Lanthimos at this point in his career. And it's very refined in that sense. It, it feels like a film which is on one hand, taking bigger swings in a production sense, it's clearly Lanthimos' biggest production. But it does feel like a film which, for lack of a better term, does feel a little bit more accessible, which isn't inherently a bad thing where we are in a career with Lanthimos. I like to see directors sort of refining their stuff and going to new places and different places. It feels like a, a great story with great characters. There's a lot of fun to go through, but it's almost like it's sort of has these jumping points throughout the narrative which sort of bring it back to a more kind of cleaner sort of vision, if that makes much sense. But I think maybe sometimes I would have liked a little bit more from the things it starts pulling out and going into. And I do think there's a stretch in the middle of this film which, whilst still hugely enjoyable and a lot of fun, feels a little bit like it's spinning its wheels a bit. There's this kind of feeling within the first half hour and 40 minutes like I, I know what you're doing and saying and you're sort of stuck at a certain level and, and struggling to go much further past that but still an absolute riot of a film with a lot of laughs and just an abundance of creativity and imagination and absurd warped visions so many aspects of this film so many little details that I'm going to be thinking about for a little while and I'm really excited to check it out for a second time I think this is definitely going to be Arguably one of Lanthimos's most rewatchable films, just purely because of the amount of crazy fun stuff that's in there. Which is more than could be said for some of the other stuff, like, <laughs> again, Killing of a Sacred Deer, a film which I very much enjoy, but let's just say I'm not putting it on over Christmas with the family, that's for sure. But what about you guys? Have you seen Poor Things? Are you excited for it? Or have you seen it wherever it's been showing in the year? Let me know what you thought about it in the comments down below. We'll have a little chat. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see me talk about more shit, go ahead and click subscribe. The button is down there for that, as well as links to my socials all of that good stuff down there. Have a little click on some buttons. I will see you guys very, very soon for some more thoughts on more films. But until next time, I need to go and find out how to get hold of whatever the hell Mark Ruffalo took in this film. Because uh, dude is having a lot of fun as an actor. And honestly, I'll have a piece of that, please.